today's video, we're gonna reflect back on all the other videos on the channel, thinking about all the theory we've learned, thinking about all the positions, all the intervals, making sense of a topic that sometimes is difficult. Those rules help you understand music. We're gonna take all those concepts, put them in a nice little box, we're gonna close the box, we're gonna tape the box, we're gonna put a rope on it, we're gonna put super glue on it, we're gonna take that box and throw it out the window. None of that applies here. This scale should not work yet. It sounds pretty awesome. Grab your guitar, I'll meet you right after this. Hello, this is David from Wallman Guitar Artistry. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping frustrated guitar players around the world develop their musical personality on the instrument. It does not have to be frustrating at all. Today, we are gonna work in the key of E Dorian. This backing track and the charts are available for free. There's a link below. Sign up once and you'll get access to this video in a very nice interface and you'll be able to play the backing track below and not go back and forth between YouTube and the backing track. And that's a mess. No, sign up once. It's a great way of learning and applying what you're learning on the channel. All right, today's video is one of those topics that um, is really difficult to explain because there is no real explanation needed. It just sounds good. And sometimes we need that reminder. Music sounds good even if it can't be explained. We are talking about dissonance here. Dissonance is, in a nutshell, using notes that are not part of the key, playing outside. So it works sometimes. You can't be dissonant all the time because if you were, well, it's gonna sound very... Yuck, right? But every once in a while, if you inject those dissonances in your playing, it's gonna sound great, particularly if you know how to go back inside. So how do we do that? Well, the very first core element in order for you to take the scale I'm gonna share with you and apply it is to have good rhythm phrasing. Without it, anything you play is gonna sound yuck again. So you need to have that rhythm phrasing and the best way to do that is to have a subdivision in your mind. 16th notes always kind of work for me. So you got this. And you make phrases in your mind. And if you can play that with confidence on your instrument, any note is going to work because you have that strong foundation, rhythm foundation. Right, rhythm is really, really important. You can make those bad notes sound good. So keep that in mind throughout the lesson. Let's jump right into that weird scale. I'm going to show you um, a piece of the scale, or the scale, but I'm gonna show you how it came to be. It came to be by accident, really. I was kind of playing, preparing actually, a lesson that I uploaded a few days ago on three note per string pentatonic scales. If you haven't seen it, check it out after this one. And I hit the wrong notes by accident and I developed this kind of weird thing. So let me show you a close up here. We have a E minor blues scale in that area of the fretboard. That area of the fretboard here, um, it, it's uh, between frets 12 and 15. If I play the, the first three strings, we have something like that. Fret 12, 14, 15, and then 12, 15, 12, 15. Okay, so we've got something like that. Then we could develop that on the other strings. But for now, we're just gonna use those three first strings because that's how the idea came to be. So I, I thought to myself, what if I took this 12, 14, 15 and played that on the second string? 12, 14, 15, because whenever you can replicate the same frets, it's easier to remember, allowing you to do faster things. And this works in this case because we're in E Dorian. And on the second string, if I play these notes, 12, 14, 15, I'm hitting the fifth, major sixth, and minor seventh, which are in E Dorian. And then what if I could do the same thing on the first string? Well, that also works because now I have the root, major second, and minor third. The only note that is kind of dissonant is this one right here on the third string, 15th fret. That's the blue note, that's the flat five. But we're so used to it. Right, in blues. 
So I could do something like that, 12, 14, 15, across the first three strings. And that's gonna sound totally fine. Right, no problem there. Now, here's what I did. I took that and decided to move these two notes, 14, 15, one fret higher. So now, we know that the 15th fret is going to be in, it's going to work, it's accepted. Yes, that 15th fret, again, of the third string is the blue note, but that still works, we're so used to it, we're used to hearing the blues. That note is the minor seventh, this one is the minor third, no problem there. But now we have this additional note right here. What is that? Oh my gosh. This, if I do 12, 15, 16, this 16th note is, what is that? That is the fifth, so no problem there. Here it's the major seventh. Oh no, that does not work, that clashes. And then we have the major third, that clashes too. So we've got these two notes that really clash here. But in context, Yes, we have a little bit of this dissonance. But we also have some end notes. Right, enough good notes mixed with bad notes is gonna create an idea that is uh, kind of accepted, especially if you have that rhythm subdivision. That's how the idea came to be. Now, if we take that scale and um, look at the blueprint, the formula of the scale. What we have is the root, the minor third, the flat five, the five, the minor seven, the major seven. Weird, right? And, and that's a one, two, three, four, five, six, a six note scale, a sextatonic, sextatonic, sexta, six, hexa. No, hexa is five, six note scale, right? And here's where it becomes very interesting. If you take that formula and map it out all across the fretboard, you start seeing some patterns that you've played before that are not really in context of the E Dorian scale, but they're easy to play because you've played them before. You have some major triads in there. You have some interesting chromatic passages between the um, that seventh and the root, going through the major seventh, minor seventh, major seventh. You've got, you have all kinds of different things that are happening on the, the fretboard, and you can see a, pre a representation of that scale on the, on the screen right now, and a lot of different things. If you blend that weird scale with the minor blues scale, E minor blues and E Dorian, you get a very interesting musical journey, I think, with some outside notes that are uh, kind of easy to, to get into, especially if you have that rhythm division. And uh, it just sounds cool, I think. So I'm gonna jam a little bit more with this and um, let's pay attention to what's going on and try to pay attention to when I'm using that scale. I'm gonna start in, I'm gonna start gently with minor pentatonic. Introduce the the blue note. And then I can add the major second to the major six for Dorian. Starting to get more confident with the rhythm thing so I can inject that weird scale. Back in. And, and so forth. You can kind of get lost in that. And that's really what I would like you to do. Try to get lost in that idea, that concept. Remember, without the rhythm subdivision, you're going nowhere. Keep that in mind. And try to blend that new type of scale with what you're used to playing. I told you this uh, lesson is a little different. The, the notes, you can't really explain them. You just add dissonance, it's outside. 
but with the, the rhythm, it works. I hope you like this. Grab the backing track, the charts, link is below. Sign up once. Thank you for checking out this video. If you have not yet subscribed, consider doing so. And that's what I have for you today. Thanks for watching this. I'll see you very soon. Practice well.